per cent. We have to make it sustainable. Thank you, Mr. The Deputy Honourable Speaker. Member's time is yeah. to call the Honourable Member for Bendigo. And the, I'd also like to highlight the appalling speech made by the health minister in this debate. He attacked hard-working health professionals. He attacked our ambos. He attacked our nurses. I'm not surprised um, to, that there is a liberal in this place attacking our ambos because they do it every day in Victoria. Every day that the state government fails fails to negotiate a decent agreement that has decent working conditions for the Victorian AMBOs. Their code red campaign has been ongoing because the Liberal government, the state Liberal government, has failed. Now I'm not surprised to have a health minister not only attack uh, bringing forward this MPI, but attack a personal attack on people involved. When the, and I'm not surprised because when he was the shadow health minister, he came to Bendigo came to Bendigo, but he didn't talk about health. He didn't let people in Bendigo know that he'd introduce a GP tax. He didn't let people in Bendigo know, and here's a fact, that he cut $25 million from Bendigo Health. He stood up in front of a Bendigo Health sign and talked about the carbon tax. He didn't talk about health care of Central Victorians. He spoke about the carbon tax. The the then opposition leader today, Prime Minister, when he went round talking to patients and he tweeted a photo, he didn't talk about when he was Prime Minister. He would oversee a budget that would rip millions of dollars out of healthcare in regional Victoria. He spoke about the carbon tax. That's the twisted priorities of this government. They do not care about people in the bush and they continue to punish people in rural and regional Australia. And that's why we haven't seen many speakers who, are, whether they be country Liberals, a country national, stand up and speak on this MPI about regional health. When we know the people on this side that regional health is a big issue, um, people living in the regions are 1.3 times more likely to report with diabetes. They are 1.2 to 1.3 um, times more likely to get melanoma. They are 1.2 times more likely to suffer from serious illness and they are 1.1 times more likely to be obese, particularly in regional Victoria and in my part of the world. Funding which was going towards preventative health care programs, another cut because of this government. And I know I'm not alone in raising these facts because the member for Mallee himself, one National Party member who does occasionally speak out for his electorate, who actually stood outside this place, not inside, and said that people in regional Victoria and his part of the world are 4.7 times and they have a life expectancy of 4.7 times years less less than their city counterparts. Yet, rather than addressing that life expectancy issue, what we are seeing from this government is more and more attacks on regional health care services. This government doesn't have a plan for regional health care services. All this government does is attack and cut. And we have seen regional health professionals standing up, standing up and speaking out, and this government has no way to respond to them. GPs. The GPs of Castlemaine have spoken out on several times and they have written to the Prime Minister asking him to reverse his plan for a GP tax. And to this state they are still waiting, still waiting for a response. So not is it that they don't have a decent plan for improving the regional health care, they're also not responding to people, to constituents, to people working in the sector. One of the main reasons why these GPs are so concerned in regional Australia, particularly Victoria, is because these are the GPs on call for urgency care units, not emergency care units which are funded by the state government which pay the doctors, but urgency care units that are staffed by doctors, regional doctors, some work in private clinics, some who work in bulk billing clinics, some who work in GP super clinics are on a roster and they staff them. And what this government is doing to those doctors is every time somebody presents at an urgency care, they're expecting these, these doctors to be the tax collector and to collect $7. It will put these urgency care units at risk. Now, for some of these patients, that urgency care unit is two hours away from another hospital. So this government is making those families make the choice. Do they go to the urgency care unit that may not be open because it's been closed because of this government's policies, or get in the car and drive, drive two hours? Because let's remember they don't have any AMBOs because, this, because of the state government's inability to train and invest in a workforce and roster fair rostering for our AMBOs. This government should 
should stand up finally for regional health. This government should have a plan for regional health. This government should stop attacking unions, attacking people standing up for regional health, Order, and do the, the right thing.